Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes And if you would like to support me with my free service then please go to my website there's ways that you can send me gifts if you want to Um, that's groovy so yeah just check out the website and all of my recordings are on there as well plus you can leave a testimonial you can contact me write me a letter write me an email tell me how what I do is uh, useful Um, yeah cool so what I thought I would do bearing in mind it's 6.51 in the morning which doesn't really have any relevance to anything but I don't generally start a recording this late or this early However, I just spent the last probably three hours, if not more, applying online for a master's degree, as well as applying for funding for the master's degree. Oh yes, so I thought I'd talk about it. I thought that's what I'd uh, tell you about today. I'm going to go through the the course that I've applied for. Now, and just for those that have never listened to me before, these Let Me Bore You to Sleep recordings are exactly that it's just me waffling on for about an hour and you can just relax and just fall asleep like I feel like I'm going to and the thing is it gets to a point where if you listen to me regularly as soon as I start talking you automatically feel relaxed and tired so yeah, it's quite a good a good little podcast uh, I think it's quite useful it's, it's different to I mean there are other podcasts that aim at like telling stories there's a few there's not many but there are a few out there that I didn't even know about until I'd started doing this Um, but it's different because they're all different because they're all personal to the person that's doing them so it wouldn't matter if there was a thousand people doing exactly this exactly what I'm doing Um, it's going to be different everyone because of their different personalities their different voices the, the accents they have the words that they use and the tone of their voice you know it's going to be different for everybody so although technically this isn't original although I thought it was when I started um, there's not many people doing it there's only a handful really in the world that do this kind of stuff you know just I mean, if you look online the, some of the podcasts that are suggested for people to go to sleep aren't even made for people to go to sleep 
These are people that have made podcasts about things they're interested in, like talking about movies and things like that. And they've been stuck in a in a list of podcasts to fall asleep to. So that must be quite um, it's quite an insult, really, isn't it? I suppose to the person making a podcast about something that they're really passionate about. <laughs> it's kind of funny as well. Uh, but there are podcasts made specifically for people to get to sleep and I've got a few so in a way in a way kind of technically sort of I am one of the first people online to do this but I was doing it with hypnosis. I was doing it. Uh, I had podcasts with sleep hypnosis sessions long before many people did it. I was doing softly spoken recordings and stuff with a bit of whispering in before ASMR even kind of existed on YouTube. Doing a long time before that, so yeah, I'm not saying I'm a, I kind of, I've not started anything other than just what I do, for me. But at the same time, I'm not copying anyone, because you don't, it's, you don't need to copy anybody really, because we're just all different, aren't we? Plus, I don't ever listen to anybody else's podcast, like sleep podcasts. Well, first, I don't need to. I, you know, all I've got to do is just start talking to myself and I fall asleep. Yesterday, oh, because I've got other podcasts that are, they're not like this, they're more uh, hypnosis y stuff. So I've got uh, a few, but what, one of them is Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. And I've started recording that whilst laying down in bed, which is never a good idea for me because I just fall asleep. And I'm like talking about... Uh, Feel your legs. And, uh, and, you, and you feel your feet. And you, uh, I kind of just, it's a bit weird. And I did it last night, or whatever time I went to bed. And I recorded it, and it lasted about half an hour, 33 minutes or something. And I just pressed stop and uploaded it to the podcast. And it's uploaded privately so no one can see it. So then I download it, edit it and upload it again. The new version, the edited version. So I wasn't sure at that time how snorry that I'd been but surprisingly enough it wasn't there wasn't much snoring I thought there was going to be me going you know like a a piglet trying to persuade you to buy him a can of lager in the supermarket. Go on, get it for me. Well, get it yourself. They don't serve pigs. How do you know? Oh, I just assumed they don't serve pigs. Ah, but do you know that they don't serve pigs? Because I can honestly say I've never, in all of my thousands of years, I 
stood in a queue of a supermarket and seen the cashier say, sorry, we don't serve your kind. Never seen that. Hopefully never will. So maybe pigs can be served. Maybe they can go and buy their own alcohol. Don't know why I'm talking about pigs being served in supermarkets. Slightly gone off track. So yeah, so what I've done, <laughs> what I've done, oh yeah, and I fell asleep doing that recording. And I haven't made a deep sleep whisper hypnosis session for a couple of days. And I've not made a sleep, deep sleep, whatever it's called, I don't know, the relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. I haven't made one of them for a few days. But it's quite weird because the stats were still really good yesterday. I only made one recording. In fact, I had 3,305 downloads yesterday, 23rd of September, compared to the day before when I had tw uh, 2,991. And I only made one new recording. So I'm starting to think, maybe if I don't make any recordings, I'll get even more. I don't know, I mean, the Deep Sleep Whisper podcast, it's gone down in stats a little bit because I've not made one. But I've had 169 downloads so far today and the stats start at about three o'clock in the morning and it's now seven. So it's, you know, it's not, not too bad for a few hours, but 359 downloads yesterday. The day before, 451, 21st, 446, and 500 the day before that. So the last day I did a recording was 22nd of September. So it's only two days ago. But I've had 359 downloads from that recording. Yeah, so if I go a few days and the last one gets downloaded more often than if I do them every day. I can't figure it all out. I can't. I don't know why. Oh, well, it's like chronic pain relief podcast is going up in the world. Oh, maybe not. No, I'll forget that. You know, it's really strange, right? The only thing I wanted to do, not the only thing I wanted to do, but um, Phil wanted to do most with the hypnosis and the stuff online was chronic pain relief, that was it. And I did the relaxation because I was asked to do it, because I was leading groups in uh, a couple of charities in 2006, uh, into 2007, but in 2006 I was doing these CDs and because people were asking, oh, we like listening to you and all that stuff, but we only get to see you like once a week or twice a week. So I did a CD for them and then they sold out. Well, not, we didn't sell them, but they, they got taken very quickly. So I, it was costing the charity a fair bit of money and time to buy these CDs and print them out and you know burn them and all this stuff. So I ended up just making recording the live sessions and putting them onto the website. I don't have I don't think I've got any of them anymore. None of those live sessions exist. 
which is a shame because I had lots of them. Uh, I, had a, I was talking about this, I think, yesterday or the day before. I had a podcast which had hundreds of recordings and I lost probably a good 200, if not more, recordings back in 2008, maybe 2009 time. And the podcast, it just just closed it's it just like closed and you can give any notice and just closed and everything was lost because it was a free podcast and I would have paid them I would have paid them to have my podcast on there because the podcasts were doing really well you know I was really pleased with it they didn't even offer a paid service it's like what so yeah, that's why because there was a lot of free podcasts back then and I was on all of them I, I used all of them there was loads of uh, video sites like YouTube loads and I was on all of them some of them I was getting lots you know, hundreds and thousands of downloads or plays on some of the pod, uh, the video sites one by one they closed there was one um, I can't remember the name of it but I was actually getting more plays on there than I was on YouTube I was literally getting thousands of plays like 10 15,000 plays on a video after you know, like a couple of weeks And on YouTube, the same the same video would be getting maybe I don't know a couple of hundred views or something. And then at that time, and then the video the the I can't remember what it was called, but it's really good. Well, I liked it because I was getting lots of plays, and they closed. I mean, there was lots of video sites that, because I don't think YouTube was the first video site. I know, obviously, MySpace had videos service on there uh, before YouTube came along. But there were other video sites around, I think, before YouTube. But YouTube just overtook. And there's a few, there are a few video sites left, but hardly any of them really get used, I don't think. I mean, Vimeo is more for professionals, so you know, you can, you can hide the video, you can sell the video, you can have, if you've got a Vimeo account, you can have the video as part of a, uh, a, an online video course like educational course so it's good for that and uh, so they've kind of got that part of the market sewed up really and it's a really good platform and I've used them many times over the years but it's just weird how no one could compete with YouTube and no one's been able to compete with Facebook not really, even Twitter. It's a different. That's a different service, though, isn't it? Twitter, and some of the other ones are different. They're not the same. Because I don't know if you remember. I mean, Facebook wasn't the first one. And obviously, MySpace was the big. It was massive, huge, absolutely huge. Millions and millions. Of uh, people using MySpace, and I think the bloke called Tom, who used to run it, he like it was his business. And whenever you joined, he would be your first friend, and he had something like, you know, hundred million friends or something. And I'm 
not even sure if MySpace still exists. I think it does, but it's it's just it's like an empty ghost town. I think maybe they'll be able to revamp and do what Yahoo's done and sort of kind of rebrand. I don't know. Some websites are able to do that. They kind of disappear, but they're still, I don't know, they still seem to have some backing, some financial backing. Because MySpace, it, it then became more very focused on bands. And it was for bands to start with, and then, then it got kind of took over by the public because it was like a really good place to be it was in some ways I prefer MySpace to Facebook because it seemed to me quite a positive place and yeah that's my recollection of it but I might be I might be looking through my apple coloured glasses. I haven't got any roses. I have to use my two with apple. Apple. Apple, apple, apple. That's another that's another company, isn't it, that went down the hill and was doing really badly and now it's one of the biggest companies in the world. Yeah. None of this is relevant to anything, is it? I don't even know why I'm talking about it. There must be a reason. Hmm. Oh yeah, so uh I put these relaxation sessions. I already had them. I was making my own and putting them onto MySpace and on my website. So I started adding these live ones onto the website as well so that my clients could download them or stream them. And so this is what, 2006, 2007, and then People, I think a few people started asking me because I was doing chronic pain sessions. That was what I was interested in, and I was doing. I think my first re, my first ever video was a chronic pain relief video, and I, you know, like I think I had about ten thousand plays of that one on MySpace. I was like over the moon. I was so happy. And it was getting so much positive feedback from people. And uh, it was just really, it was just kind, kindness. It was very strange uh, compared to how it is now online. Uh, so not so much towards me, but how, you know, things I've seen and the, not everybody's so friendly online. Uh, especially on YouTube, it's amazing some of the stuff I've, I've seen. I don't. So I watch YouTube on television now or on my phone. So I never get to see the comments. So on a laptop, the comments are there at the bottom. On the TV, the comments don't come up. And on my phone, generally, the comment, I've got a kind of streak go all the way down to get to the comments. So if I watch videos mainly on TV, the YouTube videos, I don't get to see any of the comments, which is quite nice. And then people started commenting and sending me messages saying, can you do some sleep sessions? You've got a relaxing voice. I fell asleep listening to you. I wondered if you could do something specifically for sleep. So I thought, oh, Damn it, I don't want to. I had a tantrum. I just climbed up a mountain. 
yelled, egg, and then uh, climbed back down again. I said, yeah, all right then. So I started, you know, if you wanted, I shout out, egg. But I didn't, did I? I didn't climb up a mountain. I just made it up. And I, I made a relay, I made a sleep session. So I'd gone from chronic pain to making relaxation sessions, the live ones, and then making relaxation sessions at home to making sleep sessions. Because people listen to the relaxation sessions and they were falling asleep as well. And the sleep sessions are always the most popular. Even though the relaxation sessions were really popular as well, some of the ones I did in the past. And the even the pain stuff was you know well received at, at times. But the sleep sessions, they're the ones that um, I kind of become known for that. Well, known, but well, not known, am I? But you know what I mean. Known by those that, li- mind you, everyone's known by those that listen to them, aren't they? But I suppose I don't know if you think about me. I imagine a lot of people would associate sleeping with me, with my voice, sleeping, falling asleep, either being bored asleep or listening to the sleep hypnosis sessions. Although, 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 bing bong bing, I'm hoping, and the way it's growing, the other podcast, the the stress anxiety podcast that's growing to the point where uh, on par daily probably with the uh, the sleep hypnosis we no the deep sleep whisper hypnosis but it's just a way behind because I didn't start making new sessions till a few months back I've got like 59 episodes as opposed to 149 for the other one. But it's growing, so I'm kind of perhaps getting to be known for something else, which is quite cool to be known for something else as well. So I can be known as the boring man. I might have always been known as that, I don't know. I don't know if it's what I say that's boring or how I talk that's boring or it's just I don't know maybe I don't know so that was the introduction to this recording have a little drink Get me mouth nice and wet. Really a weird sentence again to say. So you hear a little bit of tip tapping, but that's just me on the on the laptop. I was gonna sort of read you some stuff. I've got another podcast as well. <laughs> I can't help but I just keep making podcasts. But this is on podcast.co and it's called Jason Newland's Healing Voice. It's basically all of my stuff, all of the stuff going back to, I don't know, but since records began, kind of my records. So from the 17th, to today, so what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
So this is the eighth day. So just over a week, and it's only the beginning of the day here. I've had 3,194 downloads from that podcast. See, the first day, 17th of September, I had 51 downloads. 18th of September, the next day, 152 downloads. Then on the 19th, 26. Oh, 26. What's going to happen now? Then 95 on the 20th of September, which was, was Friday, was it? I don't know. Like, what's going to happen now? It's 95, it's gone up, but I wonder what it's going to be like on 21st. 1,036 downloads. Wow. It's gone down a little bit on the 22nd, 815 downloads. Gone up to 919 downloads on the 23rd of September. And there's 100 so far today, 100 downloads. So yeah, I've kind of been uploading my stuff and doing that thing where I just <laughs> I refresh the page to see if it's gone up at all go on go up from 100 go on go up go on go on go on oh somewhere some podcasts only update every Like hour or something, or two, you know, they don't, they don't do it like constantly. So the stats for my other my Spreaker podcasts: four hundred sixty-six thousand eight hundred forty-five. So this is nice. If I, if it was eight hundred forty-five, I refresh that one. If I count to ten, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, refresh it. Still the same. Come on. That's not fair. It's because I haven't it's because I haven't uploaded anything for ages. It's been twenty seven, twenty eight hours since I last uploaded a recording. So it's because when I've just uploaded something and I've like released it, it's uh you can s- if it was in real time, you could just see the numbers going up. But I keep refreshing it, nothing's happening. Oh, why am I being so honest? I could just be saying, yeah, it's now 700, it's now 920. But no, it's almost like they're going to go down. Of course, uh, no, still refreshing. Nothing. Nothing's happening. It's almost like there's no activity on the podcast at all. Come on, baby. Don't do this to me. I'm refreshing it. It's it's almost, you know, like when you ring... Oh, it's now 846. Yeah, he's gone up one. It used to be like that years ago when... Um, I haven't done it for a long time, but I'd phone someone and the phone was engaged. And I keep phoning them and keep phoning them and keep phoning. And it got to a point where I just got almost obsessed with phoning. It's like, just keep phoning and keep phoning and keep phoning and keep phoning. And eventually they answer. 
and they say, hello, you flew to the local library, how can I help? I was like, yeah, um, I was just wondering what time you close. And it's like, why well, I didn't even need to speak to them, I could have just looked online. Why am I, this is like, you didn't answer, I've got to keep phoning you, why didn't you answer? Not like that now. Oh, it's now under 847. <laughs> so if it goes up by one a minute, it goes up by more than that, but if it was one a minute, that would mean it'd be 60, 60 an hour, 60 times by 24, so 60 times by 10 is 600, 1,200. 1,000 and yeah so it's it's over 1,100 so I'm probably looking at probably only two a minute really isn't it if it's 3,000 a day probably two two a minute so me refreshing it every like two seconds oh it's now 849 so it's gone up by two during that sentence just shows you doesn't it it's almost like the internet can hear me it can hear me talking it's like oh Jason wants us to have a few downloads come on everyone let's get some downloads for him just so he's got something to talk about but what they don't realise is I have got something to talk about today because in front of me is the website for the College, the college course that I've or the university course that I've applied for and I will let you know only you I will let you know my progress on that they say it takes maybe four weeks before I get to know um, I'm not sure, and that might be in the student loan but Basically, the course costs 10,000 and something pounds. And I've applied for the full amount for the student loan company. So I'll get 10,000 pounds, but I just have to pay that directly to the, to the university. Um, I would have thought that they'd pay it directly, but perhaps I have to do it. So I'm not going to have any money I'm not going to sort of get any cash or anything and oh it's now 852 I'm just going to turn up I'm going to stop looking at that it would be nice to get a bursary and stuff like I did before or a student loan where I can actually get some money for me but they don't don't seem to do that with the masters they only, they only lend the amount for the course. See, when I did the undergraduate, I got paid for living. I didn't get paid for living, but I got paid um, kind of living expenses. I got a bursary and a sort of bursary. There's something that I got something I didn't have to pay back. And then I got stuff that I did have to pay back. And I was getting paid. It wasn't a lot, to be fair. It was about nine thousand pound a year. I think it was three pound, three thousand pound every four months, something like that. And so I had to, you know, I needed to work part time to get through it, which I did. And, but this doesn't give a bursary, doesn't give any living money. So the only way to do it is, so I'm, you know, I could, I'm able to do it at the moment with my situation. But yeah, so uh, can you imagine? master's degree and I had to fill I mean the form was long online 
and there was I was thinking, oh, I hope this doesn't do what some forms do. You know when you spend a bit too long on the page and you go to click next and it times out the page and you've lost all you, all the information. Well, this didn't do that. And I spent hours going through it and putting all my information in and then writing a, um, a personal statement, which was, I suppose, the not hardest part, because I was just honest, but it's the part that I don't know whether or not it's what I told them about would be of use to them. I should have, uh, should have, would have, could have. I could have read it to you if I still had it here. No, I don't. I don't know where it is. Never mind. So, but I'll read you the, the details of the course. So this is Anglia Ruskin University. Now, I know a few people that have gone to university there and done someone, I know someone that did a, I think they did a positive yeah it might have been this positive psychology course MS so it might I guess it's probably exactly the same course so she did that and she was doing that at the same time as doing the, the first year of the degree counselling I how imagine doing two at the same time because she already had an undergraduate degree in a different thing so it's like wow so, but she was like super um, academic, like really, you know, kind of um, just super clever, super able to do all that stuff. And I knew someone that went to Anglia Ruskin, they did a degree, a master's in social work. And I knew another person who did a cognitive behavioural therapy degree as well. So I know people who have been there. And I've been to the... I thought, the thing is, I've been to the one in Chelmsford a couple of times, the university there. But this isn't in Chelmsford, it's in Cambridge. So if I go there, <laughs> I can tell people that I go to Cambridge. And technically, I won't be lying. So that's quite cool, isn't it? Imagine, where did you go to university? Oh, I went to Cambridge. Mm. Yes, I'm uh, studying there. Mm. Yes. Because mm. that basically, that's the only place they do it. They don't, the, the particular course that I'm applying for starts in January because it's too late to apply for September because we're near the end of the month and I wouldn't want to put that pressure on myself of uh, starting the course without knowing whether or not I'm going to get it funded and also all the rush you know and maybe turning up and having missed the first couple of weeks, nah, I don't want that. So I'll start in, in January, um, all being well, and it's gonna be in Cambridge. So it's, uh, I don't quite know how it works, because I know Cambridge University, people that go to Cambridge, it's a different in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually question that. What's the difference between Cambridge Uni and Anglia Ruskin? Yeah, 
that's the one okay uh, oh. oh I didn't know that I should read out what I'm saying. The question is ah. Is Anglia Ruskin actually part of the Cambridge University? That's the question. I'm going to see what it says here. This is called the studentroom.co.uk. So the question is, it's a thread. It says, I've read that Anglia Ruskin is in Cambridge, but is it actually part of the prestigious Cambridge Uni? Is it a good uni? Let's see what people have written. Oh, someone's written, no, it's just in the same city. No. And someone else has written, it's not part of the Cambridge Uni, no. And someone else has written, no, not part of the prestigious Cambridge, prestigious Cambridge Uni. And then someone else has written, no, to be frank, it is like how Oxford Brooks is in Oxford, but isn't Oxford Uni. Or Birmingham City University is in Birmingham, but isn't the University of Birmingham. It isn't very good. If you want to get a good degree, I would advise against going there. Oh. That's not very positive, is it? And someone else puts, lol, they wishes. And someone else wrote, the teaching course is, this is nine years ago. Blimey, it's a long time ago. The teaching course is having loads of problems. My friends just finished her first year and they may not be carrying the course on to year two if it doesn't improve. As someone's written, these are all from nine years ago. I didn't realize the internet was that, that old. Someone's written, it's just in Cambridge. I went for the open day, hated it. And when I got a letter from them with my offer on the back, it was a scary legal stuff. Didn't like it. My other two uni choices didn't feel the need to shove law stuff down my throat just for an offer. And I think that I'm very money orientated. That's what they wrote. Picture of a cat. Someone else wrote, No, they're close to each other in the same city, but that's pretty much it. Someone else has written, <laughs> good one. I don't know if this is a uh... so I think this is um, possibly a I don't know if it's sarcastic. Someone's written, yes it is, but it is, a, it is a kept secret. Similarly, London Met is part of LSE, Thames Valley University as part of Oxford University, and Howard University as part of, as part of Harvard University. Someone, uh, someone else has written, it's an ex-poly which became a uni in 1992. So nearly 800 years after Cambridge did. I think it used to be an art college or something like that before. That was that one. So it says someone else has written again nine years ago. One of its campuses is in Cambridge. 
but it's not a part of Cambridge University. It depends on what you're studying, what you want to do. It's good for courses like nursing and optometry, but not much use taking a law degree there and wanting to work for a magic circle law firm. What's a magic circle law firm? That's a magic. Magic circle is magic, isn't it? Someone just said, nope, in the same city, different universities. And someone else, he's, he's been reading all the other things and he, all the other comments says, this made me laugh so much, so, so much. So that was uh, Braddle Blackwell, again, nine years ago. And now people are just basically just having a go at Angry Ruskin. So, my most memorable thing about my interview is getting a train there with a sign at the stage and saying, Cambridge, home to Angry Ruskin University. Probs why I didn't get an offer, thinking back on it. What? That doesn't make sense. Probs, probs, I guess that means shorts for probably. Probs, why I didn't get an offer thinking back on it? I'm not sure, but. Unless he's just saying his most memorable part was the journey there. Oh, or her journey there. That was nine years ago. I don't know if the trains exist then. He says, oh, someone says, we used to have that sign on the buses as well. Okay. Someone else has written, yeah, so one of the colleges you can apply to, Anglia Ruskin College, Cambridge. It's a good college. Just has this uh, bad rep, so students pretend it's not part of the uni. Same way Homerton isn't part of the uni. Okay. And someone's put, I lolled 66 times. So he laughed 66 times. Laughed out loud. No one ever puts L, do they? Just for laughed. I laughed. Or LQ. I laughed quietly. L A S L laughed at standard level. Uh, 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 uh. I think that kind of uh, that's the thing with the internet. It's like I'm applying for a course called Applied Positive Psychology, which is all about positivity. the comments I'm reading hmm. so here's a thread starter so I was rid of this and oh this is star this was uh, 19 minutes ago so I've not read it so I don't know what it's going to say so uh, okay so my flatmates decided to go out yesterday while I stayed at the flat I went to bed early, so I didn't see them until now. It's the morning, and I open my door, and I see my flatmates laying out their mattresses in the hallway. I thought this was pretty weird, but anyway, whatever. I'm about to literally step over them to go to the toilet, and I see them all naked, fully naked on the floor. I'm trying to lock my door without waking them as they are sleeping right outside my room. What am I supposed to do? I can't leave my room and have somewhere to be. Or I can't, re oh, so I can't leave my room and have somewhere to be. I'm also scared if I call up the university and tell on them, they will be reported and come for me. 
I can't ask parents and friends for advice as they will be really worried about me. I want to request to move out, but I'm scared of telling on them. What do I do? Please someone help me as soon as you see this post. What shall I tell the university? It's got to be weird actually having a bunch of naked people outside. Why are they sleeping in the hallway? I'll throw a further ones from years ago because that's just been posted. So my advice. Let's see what other people have written. I'm guessing they'll wake up eventually. Would lock the door. Are you friends with them? If yes, you can explain how weird, scary it was in the morning and not to do it again. Or if it's not the first time, we get some help with moving out. I suppose some people don't like nakedness today. It's like, ugh. And from the sounds of it, um, I'm scared of telling on them. That's quite a young phrase. It's, that's, that's a very young person, isn't it? They're so... Perhaps it is my. I suppose because I, I lived on my own from the age of sixteen. So I was, you know, kind of used to it. But I imagine if I left home for the first time at eighteen and travelled, or nineteen even, but like travelled to the different side of the country. Let's face it, if you're going to travel you might, to a university, you might as well get as far away as possible. And yeah, it must be really kind of daunting, I suppose. I'm not really giving it any thought. I still kind of don't want to either. Just, I suppose the closest thing I've got to that is when I went to Butlins. But I was 20. 25 but you know travelled to the a long way away ended up I'm sleeping in a room with someone I don't know surrounded by people I don't know and that was quite yeah that's quite daunting it was quite very interesting situation interesting it was that's, that's a word interesting So yeah, that might probably be quite quite weird, especially for people that have probably less weird for someone that lives in a city. But if you live in a little town, like a little village or a little town, and you kind of know everybody, and you're still friends with people that you went to school with, and you've been and you've been going to school with them since you was like five years old or something. Then I suppose moving away from that must be quite. I imagine it'd be wonderful, but it's pretty quite strange for people. But if if someone is living in a big city, well, there's not that many big cities, is there? But a city is a lot bigger than a town, a little town. There's more people. There's less. There's less kind of neighbourliness and people less like knowing each other's business and stuff in a city compared to a a tiny little town I imagine mind you it's it's different now isn't it it's uh, I think even going back probably 50 60 years ago in London people would know each other and it'd be kind of a community and stuff but can you hear that in the background that's Andre basically just run over done a massive poo on the paper <laughs> I do wonder I just 
what do I get out of this relationship? <laughs> so, I might have to edit that and make it a bit quieter. <sighs> oh, she has written, they're complete strangers who I just met yesterday. I don't know if this is complete normal. They might have locked themselves out of their room. Yeah, as you're thinking about it, just my empathy has kicked in. Um, yeah, that I imagine I've lived in enough rooms, lots of different rooms in like shared houses and yeah, imagine imagine coming out and seeing someone starkers sleep on a mattress outside your bedroom. Like, oh. Well, I can see it'd be quite nice in some ways, but just generally it'd be kind of unusual. The thing is Posting on a public forum like this on a student website and the studentroom.co.uk, I'm guessing, probably gets a lot of traffic. Someone's going to see this and know the people involved, don't they? And probably say, do you do sleep in the hallway? Are you still doing that? Still doing that, are you? Yeah. Well, good luck. I hope. Oh man, I need to open the window. I haven't got. I haven't even got around to. Oh look. I didn't realise how much fun this will be looking at this. I've never even thought about looking at forums and questions and stuff. Uh, this is quite a good website really. Looks like this, looking through it, I've not seen any kind of really, apart from being being rude about Angley Ruskin. I'm bored AMA, what does AMA start for? And the thread starter is just as above, so sh whoever it is couldn't be bothered to retype I'm bored AMA or, you know, copy and paste. So someone's written AMA. What is AMA? I'm bored and I don't know. I'm bored, enormous marmite arms. I mean, I don't know. I'm bored and making art. Emma, Emma. I'm bored, Emma. A M A. No, I really don't know what it means. Someone else has written something. I'm a fourth year medical student, hating it AMA. What does AMA stand for? What? What does it? I don't get it. I'm just going to have to Google it, aren't I? AMA, what does AMA stand for? Amazon's come up if I put that in. 
I am I. I am I. What's I am? No, I don't want Amazon. I just want A M A. A M A. Supporting the cultural sector with training and resources, Arts Marketing Association. Urban Dictionary. Ask me anything. AMA. Blimey. How? I honestly didn't know that until just now. Swear down, I didn't know. Could you Adam and eat it? Blimey. Anyway, there's not enough time to tell you about the Applied. It's called Applied Positivity Psychology MSc. And there's a lot there, but I'll have to just do it another time. Student life, our campuses. I never joined a student's union when I was... I didn't do any of the activities. Because the, the college I went to before, it was part of Essex University, but it was called the Colchester Institute. So the course was accredited by the university. Uh, so it was an undergraduate with a uh, Bachelor of Arts of Honours, I think. And... Uh, but most of the people there were really young, like really sort of 16 onwards kind of age. And there were adults there as well, but it was predominantly, I'd say, at least 80% probably higher of the students were probably 90% under 20. which meant there was no activities for that I really felt comfortable going to. I thought about going to the Wing Chun Kung Fu Club, but I didn't. The thing is, if I go to Cambridge, I can't... This... I wonder how many times... How many days a week would I be going if I went there? Benef careers and it's where you study. The facility of science and engineering is where I'll be studying. It's one of the largest of the four faculties at Anglia Ruskin University. Where can I explore for entry? These entry requirements, suggested courses that may interest you. Ah. Cognitive and clinical neuroscience. That would be like proper beautiful to be able to do that. Because neuroscience, that's the future. You know. Isn't it amazing? This is my real voice now. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that over a hundred years, 1990, 2000, well, like 120 years, or well, well over a hundred years, psychology has been kind of going. And all these leaps and bounds and psychological research and everything like that okay and then someone had the idea you know what maybe we should start looking at the brain like oh never thought of that 
course you should. It's like, how? You wouldn't do it for any other part of the body, would you? I see you've got a pain in your stomach. Okay, well, let's talk through it. No, <laughs> you have to kind of look inside to see what's going on. So yeah, neuroscience is amazing. The way the brain is so flexible and the plasticity of the brain, it can grow, it can um, repair itself. How we think affects our brain. How we think affects the health of our brain, which then affects how we feel. It's like, it's amazing stuff. Absolutely beautiful, I love it. But uh, I'll have to put that on the back burner. Study that another time. I kind of study it anyway, but not, you know, just through videos and, you know, watching stuff and learning. There's one here, consumer psychology. And that would be interesting from a sense of starting a business and selling stuff. But probably more interesting for someone. Yeah, it could be really useful. Then there's foundations in clinical psychology. I like the one I've applied for. Applied positive psychology. Because I'm hoping, I said it in my statement, personal statement, that I want to use what I learn to help myself and others to make it part of what I do, the recordings I do, and to spread my learnings to help other people. So that's kind of the reason I want to do it. Plus, you know, to help myself as well. Ding dong, bing bong bong. Doesn't say anything. Fees and funding, ten thousand seven hundred pound a year for the the course. How do I pay my fees? You won't need to pay fees until you've accepted an offer to attend, but you must pay your fees up front in full or installments. We offer a fantastic range of ARU scholarships which provide extra financial support while you're at university. Oh, I'm going to click on that. What does that say about scholarships and bursaries? We know that undertaking a degree course is a bit, 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 bit. So I wonder, I don't know really much about, so what is that advice? Well, you, there's one for students whose exceptional academic achievements and extracurricular achievements set them apart from their peers. Probably not the one I'm going to be going for. They got off one for um, bipolar, I don't know, STEM merit scholarships, alumni, alumni, completed, no, partner scholarship, sports, no, that's not going to give me, if an EU national come to study, that's not me, MBA, boost your career prospects, no, international excellence, no. Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't fit any of those categories. Oh, never mind. So the last time I looked at the stats of Spreaker, eight hundred and fifty-two. So what is it now? Nine hundred eleven. Oh, that's gradually. And the podcast.co, 100 for the day. What is it now? Let's have a look. What is it now? Now. 
114. So it's not gone up by much, but it's still, still groovy. I get uh, AMA. <laughs> Ask me anything. I suppose it's just the internet, isn't it? And went from text speak to yeah, I suppose that's how it started, really, wasn't it? And then sort of on phones, and then people on Facebook and Twitter, and also because Twitter was so limited to how much, how many words you could put on there, so abbreviations were possibly required oh dear anyway I'm going to go thank you for listening speak to you very soon take care of yourselves remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love Bye, see bye.